Okay, in our third video talking about symmetry and how that leads to crystal structures, in our first video we showed you how to do, uh, well, what were the symmetry elements? Glide planes, mirror planes, rotations, roto inversions, roto deflections, all those things we covered in our first video. In our second video we showed you how, okay, once you have these symmetry elements, how do you break that up into families of crystals with common symmetry elements to them, right? Those are the space groups or the point groups. Space groups is really the way to go. And now finally, let's actually show you where you can actually use this and show you why a material scientist would go through all the trouble of figuring out symmetry because it actually does make our life easier. Okay, so I'm gonna say that we should do it because it takes complicated structures and it lets us simplify them quite a bit. So to do that, we're gonna talk about a compound called phagocyte. Uh, this is a zeolite silicate framework. It has 640 atoms per unit cell, pretty gnarly. Um, but we can generate that structure with just five atoms, a space group number, and the lattice parameter dimensions. That's it. If we have the lattice parameter dimensions, the space group number, and those five atom positions, which are called the basis, then we can generate this entire nasty structure, which is awesome. So to do this, we're actually going to generate the structure together. I'm going to do it in Vesta. If you've never used Vesta, it's awesome. It's free. Um, I'll have a video in the description, a link in the description showing you um, how to download it and use it. It's rad. It's my favorite. Uh, but Vesta is right here. So here we're going to go to edit, uh, file. We're going to go to new structure. Okay, we're going to make a new structure. Okay, the first thing that you land on here is it's going to ask us, um, okay, first off, is, are, we, are we talking about a single repeating unit or two? We're just going to go straight to unit cell because we're just doing one. Okay, so the first thing it's asking here is, okay, of the 230 space groups, which one are we talking about? So our instructions here says that um, this is space group 227, which corresponds to FD 3 bar M. And again, FD 3 bar M, if you don't remember what that is, if you wanted to, you could pull up your space group link. Again, I like this one at UCL, University College London. I think it's rad. But FD 3 bar M, number 227, we could scroll down and number 227 is this guy, which you can, you can define the origin at two spots. Look at all this. It is gnarly. By having just an atom at X, Y, and Z, it's gonna show you where all the different equivalent positions are, and there's a lot of them, right? It's gonna do a lot going on. Uh, more about the reflection conditions in a later video, but anyways, all we need to know is the number for now and the unit cell size. So the unit cell is big, 24.56 angstroms. That's pretty big. So let's come over here to Vesta and let's do it. We're gonna say, okay, this is number 227. It's cubic, so let's go to the cubic right here and 227, that's this one, FD three bar M, right? Okay, I haven't told us which origin to use, so we'll just go with the first one and not overthink it and see if it looks right, okay? Let's assume that it's the first one, I don't know for sure. We do have to tell it how big the unit cell is in angstroms. In this case, because it's a cubic structure, we don't have to worry about the angles between the lattice, lattices or different unit cell vectors, it's all just one vector, right? It's They're all the same and it's 24.57, I think we said. 24.56. Okay, that is the size of this thing. So now we go to our structure parameters, and this is gonna be where we define where the different atoms are located. And all we have to do is tell it five atoms. Um, we have to tell it the occupancy and the positions. So because we're not given the occupancy, we're gonna assume that they're all completely occupied, and we're gonna tell it where these atoms are located. So for example, silicon exists at the position X, Y, and Z, given here. So let's add that. So we're going to do a new atom. It's silicon. So I'm going to click the symbol here. I'm going to select silicon. Uh, you can give it a name if you want. We can just call this silicon. You could give it a charge. It's probably plus four, right? Four plus. Um, now you have to give it its coordinates. It's located at 0 0.0364, 0 0.0364. Um, it's located at 0.1272 in Y, 0.1272. And then Z, it's located at 0 0 0.3029, right? Not too bad. And again, we're gonna assume that it's fully occupying that spot, okay? Now let's add another one. This time it's oxygen. So by default, it used silicon again. So let's change it from silicon. This one's gonna be oxygen. And we'll call this oxygen one because there's gonna be four different oxygen sites. We'll just name this two. And this guy is minus two, okay? Now we need to fix its X, Y, and Z position. It's located at zero, 0.3864, so this first one is zero, this one is 0.3864, and then 0 0.6136, 0 0.6136, okay? Okay, now we've got our oxygen. Now let's do another one. This is gonna be our next oxygen position, we'll call oxygen two, 
and it's those values. So same thing, just a new label this time. It's located at 0 0.0012, 0 0.0012, 0 0.0012, 0 0.0012, and then it's at 0 0.1447, 0 0.1447, okay? Now let's do another one. And I get it, this takes like five minutes, but it is way easier than putting all 650 atoms. So it's worth a little bit of time to do this. Oxygen three is at 0 0.0684 and 0 0.0684. So this is oxygen at 0 0.0684, 0 0.0684. And then the last one is 0 0.3126, 0 0.3126, okay? So that is that one. One more, this is now gonna be oxygen number We'll call it 04, and it is located at 0.3257.3257, and then the last one is 0 .0288. 0 0.0288, and that is it. Um, once we do that, that will create all the atoms in this zeolite structure. Check it out. This whole structure filled with all those atoms we generated from just five atomic positions, our basis, the symmetry, and the unit cell size of this thing. And then obviously we could go through our different steps here, right? Uh, we could add bonds, we could add polyhedra. We'll do that real quick. Let's just add bonds because it might show it. So let's do a new one. Let's um, look for bonded when silicon is bonded to oxygen by looking out, say, a distance of three angstroms. In other words, if you find a silicon and there's an oxygen nearby within between zero and three angstroms, we're gonna apply a bond. We're gonna say that a bond exists there. And then you can turn this into polyhedra. And all of a sudden you see this zeolite structure and you can see that there are channels in this structure, right? In this phagocyte structure, if we zoom in, it might be a little easier to see these, that there exist sort of cages or channels that exist in this structure. Maybe that's important because you want to use this as a molecular sieve, right? Where you want gas molecules to pass through. Now you can see where that could happen or where maybe it's going to absorb different gas molecules or whatever else, right? Um, being able to visualize complex crystal structures becomes super easier if you think about it in terms of symmetry. Okay. All right. Um, so in our next video, we started with the basic, you know, the most basics of crystallography, which is symmetry, the symmetry elements, how we group them, how you use them. Then we're going to step way back. We're going to start with simple crystal structures, the FCC, BCC, HCP in our next videos. So stay tuned for that as we dive into the fundamental crystal structures and why we care about them and study them in material science. Okay. Thanks everybody. See you next time.